Welcome to Decentralized News, your weekly coverage of Bitcoin and all things crypto. Um, joined by my good friend Ozzy. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Look at Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, we're sitting at 60,651. Getting really close to an all time high. Before we get into that, this is not financial advice. We're not financial advice. Please do your own research. This is for educational entertainment purposes only. So, what is the Bitcoin? All time high. There's a couple of different numbers. There's 68 and 69,000 are the two. Coin market cap says Bitcoin peaked at 68,789. So just $1,000 away from that. Crazy. And that was back in November 2021. And Coin Gecko has it at 69,044. So just over 69,000. Also back in November 2021. Yeah, and then I think Trading View says it's sixty nine thousand two hundred. It really, it really depends on which exchange you look at. When you look at the figures with centralized exchanges and just how trading volume works, some of them hit a little bit higher. Some of them hit a li- were a little bit lower. I, I feel like Coin Gecko is probably taking it like the average, whereas Coin Market Cap looks like it's maybe pulling a single source. Well, it's safe to say if we hit 70,000, we're in the clear. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, like 70,000, we're good. Now, we have hit an all-time high in market cap at 1.323 trillion. Yeah, that's everyone's I know there's some people that were confused by this and we'll break it down real real fast. The reason why there's an all-time high on market cap and not on per coin value is because since the all-time high in November 2021, we've had an increase in the number of Bitcoin in circulation. And so it the supply is in that we can be a couple thousand dollars off and still hit that that all-time high for the market cap. So yeah, well, we have like 900 a day right now. Yeah. That exactly. makes sense. Thanks for breaking that down for us math deficient like me. But while we haven't hit an all-time high, Bitcoin has done a lot recently. And let's go through a couple of the highlights, of the, the big headlines that we'll see this week, the things that are sucking retail back in. Coinbase crashed for the second time. It seems to have troubles whenever there's big surges. So it's a sign that there's big surges, big waves when they hit Coinbase tends to cause some problems. I'm surprised by how much trouble they have, but it's happening. So Actually, uh, I'll, I'll, let's explain this. The reason why is because keeping server capacity to maintain the number of users that we're talking about is expensive. That amount is, and so it isn't financially feasible for them to maintain the surge capacity that we've got at, at the time. peak of the market at all times. And when they fir- went down the first time, it was a 10, they had modeled a 10 X surge in server usage and it surpassed that and then they upgraded it and obviously we've seen probably another 10x in server surge usage i know that we've been seeing coin coinbase rocket up the app download charts in the last two weeks or so they did put that official tweet that says something about latency issues and that some people may have show balances of zero but that your funds are safe don't worry but yeah uh, yeah that was all related to the server bandwidth there was just too many requests going to the servers because everyone was either re-logging into their coinbase account after not logging in in three years or uh, if they've been holding yeah that's it or if or new people opening accounts i know that getting your verification via coinbase right now is a bit slow just because they weren't anticipating the num- the amount of onboarding this early, just at this point in the cycle yet. Another sign of the excitement beyond Coinbase, there have been some screenshots. I haven't seen anything official from like a tweet from Cash App or Kraken, but I've seen some screenshots and stuff of people reporting that they're not able to buy because they're out of Bitcoin. This may just be for larger purchases. purchases. I don't know. It doesn't seem to be universal. But there are some issues at Cash App and Kraken that have been reported in the Twitter sphere. So exciting in its own way. Yeah, this is the the story that we're talking about in terms of the ETF sucking the supply dry. And I know that the ETFs were consuming at least double, at sometimes 
as much as 5x the the amount of production of big, uh, of mining capacity a day so it I've doesn't heard surprise me as high as like 10x yeah Their claims are on certain days on certain days it's gone as high as 10x the supply of bitcoin being generated by miners and it shows a cash app a lot of people may be going for small purchases buying up on cash app or because they aren't familiar with Coinbase or Kraken. And then I'm surprised by Kraken, but maybe they hadn't, they haven't gotten a resupply from one of their miners or something in the last little while. And so they're maybe running a bit short, shorter than normal. That's why I question a little bit, because that's the exchange that I use the most. And I just made a really teeny tiny purchase, but I was able to do it. So maybe it's just on larger ones, but it's speculation. But another exciting little headline, Bitcoin hits an all-time high in 14 of 20 major currencies. Notably today, I believe, it was the euro and the Australian dollar that they passed. So that's interesting just in the sense of Bitcoin hitting all-time highs, which is always a good headline, but also the effects of inflation in different countries and what's been going on over this over the bear market. Yeah, I, I know we, we've had a couple of people in the Obsidian Council that we both hang out in point out the euro new all-time high and wondering why that's not making new, new news. And I think my, my comment was inflation until, until the U.S. dollar, which is still being inflated at, at quite a significant rate, till that all-time high is hit. I think uh, people won't get too excited. Not enough major media will get excited, but I think it's definitely starting to wake retail up. That's for sure. Some people are dunking on the European Central Bank because they had an article that came out 11 days ago fighting Bitcoin as fair value is zero, and now it's hit a new all-time high. So they're dunking on them showing that. Another fun little one, more than 97% of Bitcoin addresses are now in profit this is via class nodes kind of analytics so of all the bitcoin addresses 97 percent are in profit right now so if you're in that three percent i'm sorry to hang in there yeah the time horizon is long enough you should be okay but those are probably there's a small percentage that trades it so that probably yeah it's also anyone that bought 69k so anyone who bought the like the top i would assume this number is also probably even smaller now it's probably somewhere around 98 or 99 percent of wallets are now in profit just considering people that bought the top you're never until we've got a new all-time high actually even if we have a new all-time high there's always going to be at least one percent of wallets that are not in profit because they had just bought so this is actually pretty nuts to think about pretty high percentage um, for sure a couple other fun little ones, and then we can move on. Bitcoin just passed the Swiss franc after somewhat recently passing the Russian ruble, where if it was a currency, which I guess there's some debate there, it would become the 13th largest currency in the world. And then just to finish this up, Bitcoin market cap, which we talked about a little bit earlier, just passed Meta Facebook and has silver's market cap within a hair's breadth. Silver's at 1.35 trillion we're at like 1.32 although that's gone up since we even started the show honestly so far yeah I mean, bitcoin's moving at such a pace it's hard to keep that number correct even from 15 minutes to 15 minutes we started top prepping about an hour before the show and that number's changed twice i think i had at least two significant changes so we're definitely in that period in the market which feels really weird given we still haven't had the having is still two months away or a month and a bit away around April 20th is what I've heard. Oh yeah. 420 bro. Like that, that, that's what I had heard was the date was yeah. lining up with super weirdly with uh, 420, but my, I know change. we were talking, we were talking a little bit about, Oh, what's the market cycle top. We were speculating a little bit. I saw the funniest one and it was, I don't make the rules. The market, Top was 69K last cycle. It's 420K this cycle. I, I, I was expecting someone to say that. Bitcoin does like to choose weird numbers. There was a, the, 13, right. the 13K top, which was an interesting number all in, the, in some cases. And then even 19, you think about 19K and how that kind of plays with prime numbers. Like you can't divide 19. So you can't divide, you can't divide thirteen. You can't divide nineteen. I oh, don't. I, I I guess is it is divisible, but yeah, it's interesting to see 
And then, yeah, this market's on fire. This is, I want to talk to you about this. I'm actually working on an article about this. Do Is this cycle going to be shorter? Is this cycle going to be longer? How do you think the major catalysts being the ETFs are going to change the cycle? It's already, what's the saying? It, it rhymes. It's never exactly the same. And there's this idea that, oh, we're going to have diminishing returns, that you get your 1,000Xs and you get your 100Xs and you get your 10X and then you get your what? We're going to get 3 or 4X or 2X or whatever. It just keeps going down significantly. But there was also never a pre-having all-time high. Now, we haven't technically hit it, but this is quite a push towards it and it seems very much possible. So it's already bucking the trend a little bit. And the a big reason for the diminishing returns is the way I look at it is on the supply side, each having has less of an impact. So when we went from 50 to 25, it was a 50% reduction. When we went from 25 to 12, that percentage is not as big as a reduction. When we go from 12 to six, that percentage shrinks even more. When we go from six to 3%, shrinks even more. So each time there's a having, it doesn't shrink as much as a percentage. So on the supply side, it has less of an effect. However, it is a finite supply and there's also on the demand side, and there's this idea that there is no top to Bitcoin because there is no bottom to fiat um, and that the supply side, you know, can can still put a lot of pressure on it. But you have to see so much bigger returns on the supply side in order to hit those kind of X's. Just for example, like we're within the silver's market cap of 1.3 trillion. Gold is around 10 trillion. So we need a 10X to hit gold. And then if you want 100X, you're talking about hundred trillion dollars. That's a lot of money. Where are you talking about like the market of commodities, the market of real estate, we're starting to talk about some really big numbers. Yeah. The market of all stocks. We're starting to compete with those type of numbers. Absolutely. And, and that's why, why people talk about buying small caps. When you're talking about small caps, you're often talking about something under a hundred million dollar market cap. I know you love dabbling in, in meme coins well below, even sometimes below early, 10 million, you know. below a 10 million market cap pretty often it's for 10 million uh, 100x on 10 million is you're getting to a billion essentially getting to a billion's a lot easier than getting to a trillion and right. it's a lot easier to move to 100 million than it is to move to from 1 trillion to 10 trillion a lot less right. money is required so we're definitely seeing that with bitcoin but i i think one argument that we're seeing is Hey, maybe the ETFs were enough of a catalyst of allowing a fresh supply of money of fiat to maybe buck the trend of return of diminishing returns at least for this cycle. There's two and numbers. by bucking the trend, it could go up a couple more X's than buck the trend because we're talking about less than ten X, less than five X in yeah. terms of what people are expecting from this cycle that a lot of people are talking about based off of either diminishing returns or basically approximated returns, not considering diminishing returns. And that would be, we're looking at either 120 to 140, depends on who you talk to, whose trend lines you follow. That's your diminishing returns number. And then you're taking out diminishing returns. You're talking about a 257, which is really only increasing putting bitcoin up another 2x but considering the fact that bitcoin is essentially 2x closer to its all-time high than it almost ever is pre-having is that totally unreasonable not necessarily bitcoin so what you're off. talking about is basically like between a 2 and a 4x from the 69 right yeah roughly. exactly roughly a 2 to 4x which if you think about 69 69 was more or less a three and a, a between a three and a four X from the 19 K all time high uh, in the previous cycle, we would be, we'd be matching that return. Uh, it's interesting to put it in perspective, but it's exciting because we may be hitting some price discovery modes. So we'll see what it can do, but what's causing this. You mentioned the, the ETFs, the first gold ETF took more than two years to accumulate 10 billion black rocks alone spot ETF took 10, seven weeks to get there. So yeah, it's definitely different. Definitely different, but we've also had a lot more money printing since the first gold ETF to yeah. the first Bitcoin ETF. So to keep in mind, but 
Grayscale did see a slight surge in outflows on Friday with its large largest outflow surprisingly having not much of an effect uh, to slow the market. It turned what generally seems to be an up to the right throughout the week to a flat day. It's still sitting on the largest Bitcoin bag in terms of holding about 425,000 Bitcoin, which is down about 200,000 from the launch of their ETF. So about a third of their holdings have been sold off. This, at least in my opinion, is probably related to Genesis. We hadn't been seeing volume outflows out of Grayscale up until now that would get close to mirroring the Genesis cells or how much Genesis has to sell. So this could be that catalyst coming off the books in terms of a negative impact. But we haven't had confirmation from Genesis or from Grayscale on whether that was the case or not. So something to watch out for, but generally... It's still fairly, fairly bullish that we had the largest volume or they get tied or was second. I might have been the first, but it was right in there in terms of the largest volume outflow from Grayscale. And it, the market just shrugged it off. So that can be argued as bullish. Yeah. I, and one of the reasons why people are seeing like not a massive decrease in Bitcoin prices, there's rumors especially that essentially billionaires and sovereigns are front-running retail in this cycle. We've talked about essentially everyone front-running this cycle compared to small retail. So not the you and I who've been sticking around this bear market, but those that new new retail. Yeah, newer investors or people that kind of left at the end of last cycle and are just waking up. Uh, A lot of people are saying that's being front-run by large Large equity holders, really. People who've got money to burn and throw around and have someone, they know the cycle. Everyone knows what to expect. And we had the Emir of Qatar land at Bitcoin Atlantis. So that was a pretty interesting event for a lot of maxis in the Bitcoin space. Qatar being a major oil producing nation looking for maybe some diversity outside of oil. Their Amir showed up at Bitcoin Atlantis and Matt Kaiser, famous Maxi, said that he thinks that President Bukele orange-pilled the Amir after the Amir visited El Salvador in September. So potentially one of the next big countries to hop on Bitcoin. We had heard that Qatar was building some large mining facilities to take advantage of, of some of their oil off-gassing, if I remember correctly. So that's definitely a possibility. Maybe he's also accumulating on top of getting into mining, the mining game. There's been like this mystery account that's been accumulating like 100 Bitcoin a day or something like that for a while now. There's some speculating it might be him, but it's all speculation. But still exciting news. Yeah, what was it? Michael Saylor was also at Bitcoin Atlantis. So a little bit of hype, a little extra fire for this, whatever's going on with the price right now. But this game theory about billionaires and sovereign nations buying Bitcoin is exciting. And people are like expecting it to happen eventually and that it will change the game. Talking about game changers for what could help this cycle buck the trend in terms of diminishing returns a little bit. This could be one of them as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one thing that's also bucked the trend and... We don't have this in the show notes, but I think just worth mentioning, we're seeing meme coins, which are generally a massive end of cycle, just continue to be dominant and ripping. Even during this early part of the cycle with a lot of meme coins, Whiff, uh, Dog With Hat is sitting at almost a billion dollar market cap. I think the last I checked or 800 million, something ridiculous. And you would almost never see that in previous cycles until you really hit that macro macro cycle top. And given Bitcoin's price action, it just does not feel like like we're there. Yeah, we're we're seeing it's actually at a one point four trillion a billion dollar market cap on dog with hat right now. Other token other meme coins that have been doing fairly well, Pepe has gotten some excitement. We've seen Bonk also be doing fairly well, both but with Bonk being up almost 
fifty percent in the last twenty four hours and almost two hundred percent in the last seven days. Pepe's up three hundred percent in the last seven days, and then Do- both Doge and Shiba performing fairly well. Shiba's up 232% in the last seven days, which is pretty nuts considering its uh, overall market cap is nine and a half billion. And Doge is up almost 100% in the last seven days at a $25 billion market cap. So some pretty, some pretty big runs from some tokens in the last few days, especially meme coins, but other alts have been having some pretty good days. Dot's up 24 percent in the last seven days so is cardano which is essentially just barely beating bitcoin bitcoin's up 22 and a half percent in the last seven days bitcoin cash is up 66 find a little bit that this cycle is different like you said we usually seem expect meme coins to flourish towards the end of cycles or even towards the end of mid cycles maybe why everyone's expecting a pullback but it just isn't coming so they're like oh we'll, we'll just keep playing with Exactly. So that's interesting. The other kind of interesting factor and a little bit of macro here for everybody who's watching. Last time Bitcoin was this high, the federal funds rate or interest rates were 0.08%. So basically zero. And right now it's about 5.33%. That's nuts to think about. When the interest rates are this high, there's just not that there's not nearly as much free capital. But right. maybe it's just people sense blood on the horizon and they're trying to find some form of safety and get out of just what do you think that is? But yeah, usually you want to see lower interest rates to go into risk assets. Maybe Bitcoin regular, isn't being seen as, as large as a risk or there was I know that there's a lot of institutional money that's jumping in that have been wanting access to these to Bitcoin as a product for at least since early to mid 2020. And so the, with all of that institutional money, they're able, even if they're allocating even 1% of their books to Bitcoin, that drives up the amount of capital in the system quite a bit. I've heard this argument that this is an argument or this is smart money, institutional money, whatever you want to call it, big money, seeing inflation not going away and they're trying to find a safe place. I've heard that argument. What do you think of that? It makes sense. I've done spreadsheets and I can tell you that I I could, you could feasibly take out loan, not financial advice. You could take out a loan slightly below credit card rates. And if you were to buy Bitcoin and take profit at roughly cycle peak within about 10 to 15% of cycle peak and pay capital gains taxes on it, you probably would come out ahead in, in most cases, not every case. And I'm not, I'm saying this is not financial advice. Like I'm not telling you to go remortgage your house on or or do anything like that, but given inflation and current interest rates, it still makes money. It it makes financial sense if you can handle the debt load to, to take that risk. If you believe in Bitcoin or believe in, in, in the opportunities that are there. Pretty interesting. We're still seeing no cuts on the horizon, really. We're 15 days from the next meeting in March. And then May 1st is also no expectation of a cut. June 12th, which is two meetings from now, is now at a 65% expectation of a cut. It's the earliest possible chance that we're seeing right now. But these numbers change quick, and we do have some data coming out this week and next, kind of some big data, unemployment, and then CPI and PPI the week after. So this, yeah. this could all change. Yeah, if P- CPI and PPI could come in well below expectation, then that could... Or come in high, and we're going to start hearing talk of raising rates again. Exactly. That could be that could be our catalyst for a double bottom is we continue rate hikes because inflation is out of control. I would not be surprised given the re- most recent CPI and PPI print last month. Quick news and notes for everybody. ETH only has 10 days until the decon upgrade. ETH gas is absolutely bonkers. Don't I don't recommend doing transactions on mainnet if you don't have to. Even I'm finding L2s are starting to get painful to do transactions on at five to ten dollars sometimes for different 
swaps and transactions. So hopefully Deacon will help slash those rates on L2s so that we can get more affordable gas. Vetch AI has rumors that they'll be making a big announcement tomorrow. They had deposited the remaining two and a half, uh, two million FET tokens to Binance and W Labs has completed their sale of the 10 million FET tokens that they purchased last September. So interesting to see what will happen there. I know FET yeah, FET's, a- like a, FET's an AI coin that's seen some pretty good pumps over the last few weeks. Oh, absolutely. It's yeah, one of the ones that I know a lot of people are paying attention to. The Uniswap was actually that we talked about last week was actually still in proposal phase that ends on the 7th and it looks like it's going to pass. So that is not unexpected, but we wanted to correct ourselves. I mean, you can see how it plays out and how it affects just the overall ecosystem just in this revenue share concept. Yeah, they had a pretty good day over the weekend. Uniswap is, I'm ch- double checking coin market cap right now, up about 17% in the last seven days and was had a pretty good run. It's pulled back today, but it was up quite a bit over the weekend. So that's interesting. Metis, which is an airdrop, it's in testnet. They're getting, they're launching their incentive drop program for March called Merch Drop and their decent, decentralized sequencer, as well as the Decon upgrade should be pretty beneficial for them. So Metis is out there doing some stuff. AVAX has got their next upgrade going on live on mainnet on March 6th. So lots of excitement. And on top yeah, of that, we've got the Durango update and it just makes me want to do a little research on it. What, what's going on with this upgrade? Yeah, I mean, could be a nice catalyst. I think it has to do with their subnets and making that work better, but I don't know for sure. And then FrackShare is taking a snapshot for Frack stakers on March 6th. It's expected to be a sell the news event in the short term because everyone knows the snapshot date. Outside of that, DYM, their AMM incentive is starting on March 5th, and we're seeing the Jupiter... DAO launch this week with Matic launching their Maiden Builder Testnet on March 24th and Trap launching STX 1.2 on the 7th. So some pretty big news there. Trap, big game five play that a lot of people are excited about. I've seen some play tests. It looks pretty exciting. So good to see Shrap with some more upgrades. That being said, we thank everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching Decentralized News. Please drop a like, a subscribe. We really appreciate you enjoying the content and tuning in. Remember, this is not financial advice. Please do your own research and let's kill it this cycle. What do you say, Piter? Yeah, sounds good. Let's kill it. And don't forget, there is a debate going on for what is going to be the pump song for this cycle. Right now, it looks like it's going to be Creed to take us higher. So we'll see if that one wins out. I'm, I'm still a pump it up guy, but let's see if I can get on board with this one. Sounds good. See everybody next time. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye, guys.